messing up, I've tried to tell you this a hundred times Not getting better by lying there, pretending to cry You all repeat, you can see, cause you have closed your eyes You say you listen, but you're missing what it's all about Hi everybody and welcome. I'm Tim and this is Run Tall. On today's episode, I'm going to be reviewing a Max Cushion Daily Trainer by Nike. It's their Invincible Run. The Invincible Run features a fly knit upper that's really breathable and a huge slab of Zumex foam for the midsole. But before I get into it too far, I always like to demonstrate what it looks like to run in the shoes I'm about to review for you. So let's do that. But then when we come back together, I'm going to take a real deep dive into the Nike Invincible Run to see if it's the right Max Cushion Daily Trainer for you. Now these shoes were released in early 2021 and part of the reason why it's taken me a while to be able to get my hands on a pair to be able to review for you here on the channel is the cost. They cost 180 US dollars and that's a lot of money for a daily trainer, especially when there's a lot of other daily trainer options that are out there that come in at a significantly lower price tag. And if you've seen my videos in the past, you know that I purchase all of the shoes that I review here on the channel with my own money. So when it comes to a more expensive pair of shoes, sometimes I have to either pass them by or wait till they go on sale. And in this case, they went on sale. So I picked up a pair from Roadrunner Sports the other day for about 140 US dollars, but I did see them on sale on Nike's website for the women's version for around $136. And Jackrabbit Sports sent me something yesterday as well where they had them on sale too. So if you're interested in the Nike Invincible Run, but the price tag's been holding you back, this might be a good time to be on the lookout for some sales because I think you can pick up some really good deals. Now these are a Max Cushion Daily Trainer. They're a neutral road shoe. I did order them true to size. They came in at 9.8 ounces for a men's size nine on my scales or 276 grams. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the Rontal family. I'm glad you found us here on YouTube. You can also find us on Instagram or if you wanna follow along with me on my daily workouts, you can join me on Strava as well. Both of those links can be found on the homepage of the channel. Now I post running shoe reviews, comparisons, and shoe battles weekly, but I also like to post other videos about running as well. So if you enjoy watching running shoe reviews and other videos about running, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time that I upload new content. So I'm gonna skip right to the most exciting part of the shoe and that's the midsole. Now they feature full length Zoomax foam from the heel to the toe. Yep, that's the same foam that they put in there. 4%, the next percent, the next percent too, the Alpha Fly and all of those great lineup of shoes that you often see first on race day. But now they have it in the Max Cushion Daily Trainer. So what's it like to run in these? Well, first the stack height, really tall right so in the heel they got 36.6 millimeters and then in the forefoot they got 27.6 millimeters of all of that zoom x foam so they have a nine millimeter offset from the heel to the toe it's really soft and bouncy to run in unfortunately it's also a little bit unstable so going around corners can be a bit tricky but for a Max Cushion Daily Trainer, they have probably the most energy return that I've felt so far in all of the Max Cushion Daily Trainers that I've reviewed this year. So lots of energy return to really kind of bounce and help you move through your gait cycle just a little bit faster. Now for the platform, really super wide. Just look how wide that forefoot is. And it pretty much is uh, stays wide through to the heel. It does snug up in the midfoot section of the shoe, which gives you a really nice lockdown feeling across the midfoot 
with their fly net material. And we'll talk about that here in just a second when we get to the upper. They do have a pretty aggressive curve there on the forefoot of the shoe. And again, that's to help you move through your gait cycle a little bit faster. For me, the ride of these, you know, it is really bouncy. My legs felt pretty good. Now I got about 35 miles on these shoes and that incorporates a couple eight mile road uh, workouts. Also about six miles on a treadmill at a faster pace. And I also had them out on a trail that you could see probably in the intro to this video, which was just a little over 11 miles. And as a neutral road shoe, they work best on the road, but they also felt really pretty terrific out on the treadmill too. So if you're looking for a treadmill shoe that's gonna give you a lot of cushion and bounce, don't overlook these because I think that they could make a really good option for you to put a lot of miles if you're a treadmill runner. So let's take a look at the heel design. Here you can see that they have a squared off heel. So unlike some of the shoes that we've seen for 2021 that might feature a swallowtail design or maybe a split heel design, these are pretty straightforward. And then you can see that they have a slight heel bevel here, but nothing overly aggressive. I think it's enough, however, that if you are a heel striker, it'll help make you move more smoothly through your gait cycle. Now this midsole foam is pretty unique. It's unlike any other midsole foam that I've run in and other Max Christian Daily Trainers that I've reviewed so far this year. And there's no carbon fiber plate in this midsole foam. So unlike other shoes that Nike features using the Zoom X, uh, there is no carbon fiber plate. It's all Zoom X foam. So cornering, as I mentioned earlier, is a bit tricky. It's a little bit unstable. I felt like my ankles had to do a lot of work to help keep me upright there going around the corners. If you're going straight, lots of energy return. And along those lines, I found that there was a sweet spot for me. They didn't feel comfortable or natural moving through my gait cycle uh, in every posture that I took. But when I found that, or I found that when I was landing more towards my forefoot of my shoe, so you know, that section where your midfoot kind of meets your forefoot right there, right at the curvature, I was moving pretty smoothly through my gait cycle and it felt pretty effortless. Like I could just go for miles and miles and miles really comfortably, but it didn't take a lot for me to get out of sync. So it's going to take a little more practice in these shoes, but I do really enjoy them. I think they're a great Max Cushion Daily Trainer to get be able to put a lot of miles on pretty damn comfortably. So let's flip these over. We'll take a look at the outsole. See how they're protecting all that soft Zoom X foam. Here you can see that they have it covered from the heel all the way through to your toe off. Plenty of rubber there. It is a thin layer and I think it works in the favor of the shoes here because really the highlight of the shoes is that Zoom X foam. So you don't want to take away from or inhibit that bounce or energy return that you're getting from that from having too thick of an outsole. So it is a pretty thin layer. Now that waffle pattern, that's done a pretty good job of keeping me tight to the road. Now I've had these out in some pretty wet conditions out on the pavement and I never felt like my feet were going to come out from underneath me. So let's take a look at the fly net material that they built the upper out of. Now for me, I got a really nice solid lockdown feeling across the midfoot section of the shoe pretty quickly and easily. It didn't take any effort at all. These are highly breathable, so they're really comfortable to run in. It's a little bit coarse material to the touch, so it's not a cloth feeling at all. And one of the things I just want to note is, you know, when I was out on that trail run, I kind of stepped in it a little bit. So I ended up uh, coming on to some marshy, muddy, pretty wet conditions that I ran through. And I was really pretty upset with myself that I didn't find an alternative route around it. But what it did tell me is that, number one, these are not uh, water resistant or water repellent because my feet got soaked immediately. And I still had another three, four miles to go. So that's why I was kind of upset with myself. I was afraid that, you know, I'm going to have soggy feet the entire time. And one of my socks and so on did get wet because it kind of, it kind of got flooded. By the time I finished the run, that fly net material was dry. So while it didn't repel water, it did seem to shut it afterwards. So I did appreciate that. And that's something that I might not have discovered right away uh, had that not happened. So I guess, you know, just something I wanted to share with you that while it does have some of its faults and not being water repellent, it does seem to dry out pretty quickly. Let's take a look at the eyelet chain. Here you can see that there's no big wow factor here. It's a pretty standard eyelet chain. Nike did send these big wide laces. They're the widest laces that I've seen in shoes so far in 2021 or maybe ever. I don't know. They're pretty, they're pretty darn wide and they are a little bit short. So if you want to double knot your shoes, it's going to be just a little bit tricky to do so. They do have that extra eyelet to run with a runner's knot. So especially if you're running with a runner's knot, your laces do seem a little bit short to be able to get that second knot in for safety. The tongue is pretty well padded. It is a semi-gusseted tongue, so it's not going to migrate around, but I didn't have any issues that way. And it's really comfortable. I didn't feel the laces cutting across the top of my foot at all. So the tongue did a nice job. I think it got up just about right. 
with a padding around a heel collar and a tab, I think probably just a little bit more than what they needed. In fact, you know, this comes up just a little bit high. And so I did have a, a, just a little bit of rubbing here on my ankle, but it didn't cause any blisters. But it's something that I noticed right away is that because this ankle comes up a little bit higher than what I'm used to, uh, that it did, you know, I didn't notice it, but not so much that it caused any kind of blistering. Otherwise, it's pretty well padded, like I said, and it's very comfortable to run in. You have a nice, well-defined heel pocket for your heel to set in. I didn't have any heel slippage at all, either up or down or side to side. If we look at the heel counter, now they do have this plastic TPU heel clip here to add a little bit of stability to the shoe, but I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure that it did a whole lot for me. I still felt like I was pretty unstable running around the corners anyway. Going forward, it was fine, but cornering, again, that's a bit of an issue. But you do have some structure in the heel to help hold your heel in place. It's just that that Zumex foam is so bouncy uh, that it does feel eh, a little bit unstable. Overall, I think these are a great Max Cushion Daily Trainer. Lots of energy return in that Zoom X foam. Lots of bounce. Fun to run in. I think they're a little bit overpriced at 180 US dollars, but if you can find them on sale, I say definitely go for it. Just be careful on the corners. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Hey, listen up, I've tried to tell you this a hundred times. Not getting better by lying there, pretending to cry. You all repeat, you can see, cause you have closed your eyes.